Hey, welcome you guys to another video on Camera Vince's Photo Mechanic, the ultimate professional workflow tool. In this video, we're going to cover the different methods for exporting, including saving, copying, emailing, and sending images to online services like Flickr or Smug Mug or Zenfolio. So let's get started. First thing that we're going to take a look at is saving. So like we mentioned earlier, when you set crop markers, this comes into play when you start saving or exporting. So let's take a look at this a little bit more detail. We're going to go ahead and right click on this image and we're going to hit save photo as and you have the ability to do a copy you can rename but we're not going to go into that stuff so we'll hit save photo as and now the first thing you've got to ask yourself is what file type do I want do I want a JPEG do I want a TIFF do I want a PSD and then the quality here's where you're going to apply the cropping this is important if you've already set a crop factor and scaling one of the things I like to do when I'm sending my photos up to an online service is I like to scale it down a little bit so that, that my high-res photos aren't up there but let's assume for this that we're just going to save it in full scale and full resolution and we're going to send it over the other thing that's pretty important here is converting to sRGB this photo is going to be sent to a client or it's going to be sent to a lab to be printed you might want to have converted to sRGB in order for your color space to be correct if you're going to resize, which I will get into in a minute, um, you might want to sharpen it as well. Photo Mechanic has some killer sharpening tools in there. It does a really good job. And you got to pick the source. All of mine are raw, so it's going to dump them out. Then you've got some other information here. Do you want to apply some more IPTC data information, which is the stationary pad? I usually do that coming in, tweak it once it's in, and I don't do it on the way out. But, but you might. Do you want to preserve the EXIF information when possible? I highly suggest that you do do that. Um, there's no WAV files here. Do you want to add a watermark? We're going to talk about that in a minute because I do have uh, watermarks that go on my Flickr account. You want it to be renamed, and if you do, it'll ask you what you want to rename it to. And you've got variables here again. And then a destination. You can send it to the original folder. You can send it to a new folder or a subfolder and so on. If the image already exists with the same file name and you try to put it in the folder, under the preferences you tell it what to do. By default, it just does a rename. So it'll add a letter to the end of it. So in short, we're going to leave it at full size. We're going to leave it at full quality. We're going to make it a JPEG. We're going to put it in the original folder. And we're going to go ahead and apply the cropping. So we'll hit apply. Hit OK. Off it goes. Now that file's done. And there's our new folder, our new file. And it is cropped, as you can see. And it is a JPEG, and it is full scale, ready to go. There you go. So that's saving. You can do copying very similar. You can also um, move it to different folders. But now, let's say that we want to send this as an email. Well, we're going to go ahead and delete the JPEGs, because one of the things that I like about Photo Mechanic is that when we do a lot of different exporting it'll actually create all of our JPEGs for us and we don't have to have a disk full of JPEGs and raw files cluttering up our hard drives. Okay so let's say that I want to send this photo uh, to a friend of mine I've got back from my shoot and I like it it's cropped well so I'm gonna go ahead and right click and I'm gonna send this via email. So I'm gonna click send via email and this dialog comes up now there's a couple of things to pay attention in here um, I highly recommend that you resize it because right now this is a 6 meg file. Unless he needs the full size image, I would probably go ahead and shrink it down. I'm a um, fan of 800 pixels wide in emails, so I'm going to tell it to fit in the box. So the longest edge is going to be 800 pixels. I'm going to go ahead and apply the cropping, and then because I'm shrinking it down, I'm going to go ahead and sharpen it. Now, who do I want to send it to? Well, the subject I'm going to use as a variable, which I already have set up, and that is the headline. We did that on the IPTC data earlier. So I'm going to select the headline variable. So let's come into here. Here's our IPTC fields. Go find headline. There it is. Now, in the body, I'm going to add in the caption that I've already typed into the IPC data. So I'm going to come over here to the variables again, and I'm going to find the caption. 
there it is. I'm going to also put in the file name so that if I have to reference this later, I know exactly what file it was. So let's go back up to here to find the file name. And there's the file name. Go ahead and select it by double clicking and then I'm going to add in my signature. Now one of the things that I like to do, especially if you're sending multiple photos, is make sure that I create a separate email for each photo so I don't jam up somebody's email box. And then I'd like to review this before it goes out in case I misspelled something or I want to add something to it. So I'm going to go ahead and have those two checked and then hit OK. It's going to create the image for me. There's my email. There's the description. It's already in there. There's the file name. There's my um, signature. There's the sub subject that we typed in earlier. Um, it looks like it's ready to go, so I'll go ahead and send it to him. And it's really that simple, sending out emails. And if you had selected more than one photo, it would have sent out an email for each one of those, and it will pre-fill out all of that information automatically for you. One of the reasons why the IPPC data is pretty important. The last part of this video is going to cover online services such as Zenfolio, SmugMug, or DF Studio, Flickr, any of those. And in this particular piece, we're also going to co cover watermarking because I think watermarking is pretty important when you start sending your photos out across the internet. Um, there's one thing that I always like to, to remember, and that is once sent, always available. So what that means is once you click that send button and it's on the internet, it's always going to be available to anybody who wants it. So let's take a look at that. Let's go ahead and send this photo up to our Flickr account. So how do we do that? We right click it and we hit FTP and our new dialog box comes up and it's going to, to give us similar options that we saw earlier. But we're going to go to FTP and we're going to select Flickr. Now if you haven't already, you need to go ahead and click Connections and create a, con a connection to your Flickr account and then it's going to ask Flickr in, to approve it and allow the transmission between Photo Mechanic and Flickr. So it's, it's important that you follow through with that before you send it. Now once you've got that relationship established, then all you have to do is select the account that you want and then if you have any folders you can select a folder to go put it in we're going to go ahead and say none these are my my photo sets i'm going to tell it to go ahead and send up the jpeg i'm going to use the highest quality but i'm going to i'm going to scale this down to 1280 so that's going to be the largest photo size that i'm going to put up on Flickr. the other thing i'm going to do is i'm going to set this resolution to 72 pixels that way it's not high res. I am going to go ahead and sharpen it because Photo Mechanic does a great job of sharpening. And we're, I'm going to apply the cropping and this time we're going to apply a watermark. So let's take a look at uh, applying a watermark. What I have uh, it defaults to, to draw text. I have that unchecked and I'm going to use a logo. What I've created is just a PNG with a transparent background in Photoshop that I'm using. I set the watermark. I select it from a variety of different watermarks. You can use all kinds. This particular watermark is going to display in the lower left hand corner. If you've got some important photos like when I shoot clients and I'm doing portraitures, I'll watermark all the way across the center of the image. But in this case we're going to set it down. This, this one is designed to be set in the lower left hand corner and we tell Photo Mechanic to do that by checking where the position is going to be, the opacity that it's going to be set at so it'll have a little bit of transparency to it and we need to go ahead and draw near the outside edges so that Photo Mechanic will put it on the outside edge of the image. Once that's done this and this checkbox is selected it will automatically add that watermark to all the photos that it creates. Now again we're going to note here that Photo Mechanic is creating these as JPEGs in temporary directories, but they're not being stored on your hard drive anywhere. So they get created and they get deleted, and everything's being worked out of is being 
done through the raw file so I don't have this huge amount of JPEGs floating around that I have to know where they go to. So now that I'm done here, I have a variety of other information just like we saw earlier. I can apply the stationary pad if I want and so on. Um, if I want to save those JPEGs, I can create a subdirectory to save them in. But one of the strengths that I think Photo Mechanic has is the fact that I don't have to if I don't want to. It's incredible. So we've got our account. We're not gonna we're gonna go out, we're not gonna pick a photo set. Everything's ready. So on all reality, all I have to do is hit send. Now this upload dialog box is gonna come up. If you have multiple files going, you'll see them in here. This is the total overview. And as you can see, that was pretty quick. So it took that full-size RAW file, created a JPEG, and sent it up to Flickr for me. So we'll go ahead and close out the upload dialog box. This little green box up here tells me that it was sent. Red means that there's an error. Yellow means that it is sending. So let's go take a look and see what, what happened on Flickr. So here's my Flickr account. We'll go ahead and reload this page. And there's my photo. There's my watermark. It's been cropped. Everything looks pretty good. If I click into the photo, I'll notice that all of my, in, my uh, IPTC data information is here, as well as all of my information of EXIF information is over here. We'll click on more properties. Everything that I typed in, my name, my credits, the copyright, how this is allowed to be used, everything's here. This is why this is so important to have all this information because you don't really want people to take your photos from you. And then the headline is the title, so that's already updated. And the keywords are the tags, so that's already updated. So it makes short work of getting these photos online to different services. And this works the same whether you're sending it to Smug Mugs and Folio. There's quite a few different services that Photo Mechanic works with. Mm -hmm.